The Xbox showcase, which took place yesterday, is a definitive marker for a shift in momentum we are about to see Microsoft take in their approach to video games for probably the next five to 10 years. It may not seem like much right now, but I think the implications are kind of large. So let's talk about Xbox. First, I'm going to recap, you know, the whole show. I'm going to go through every trailer and tell you what those games are about. And then uh, from there, kind of just share some broad and general takes about what's going on with Microsoft and how that might affect, you know, the overall kind of game industry uh, going forward. So let's quickly just jump right into it. First up, right off the bat, we got a cold open with a Redfall gameplay trailer. Uh, we got class examples. So, you know, they kind of already talked about this before, but there's going to be a sharpshooter kind of scout class who kind of has like a special vampire eye and also this like a spectral bird or something there's an engineer who has kind of a robot pet or robot turret that's going to kind of roll around with you uh, there's an inventor or a cryptozoologist i think is what they call him but essentially seems like a kind of trap based class and then there's kind of the what seems to be the main character of the game who has telekinesis uh, abilities that they use to fight vampires. Uh, the vampire deaths, I must say, look really cool. I, I can imagine it feeling really gratifying. Uh, so good on this trailer for kind of showing that off. One thing that I think maybe a lot of people didn't realize about this game, uh, which is kind of more revealed in this trailer and talked about, is that Redfall is going to be an open world game. Uh, it's gonna have different areas. They mentioned a downtown area, like a historic district, a seafront with kind of a lighthouse perhaps. There's fairgrounds shown off in the trailer. One interesting thing I did notice is that we're seeing that uh, kind of red jacket vampire who we thought was probably like a named NPC in that first trailer or a named character with important uh, story arc just seems to be kind of showing up in this gameplay trailer. So, uh, you know, they, you obviously you have to have limits in games. You can't, we're not to the point yet where we can have like a thousand different uh, bad guys. These are still video game ass video games. There's limits here, but yeah, I saw that, that red jacket vampire. I was like, whoa, wasn't this guy, like, isn't this guy already dead? I don't think that speaks poorly to the game necessarily, but just kind of to the limit of, you know, you know, we're into the next generation, but you know, how far is that really tech technology wise? I think things are looking a lot better. Games are getting a lot bigger, but you know, we still have these limits. They mentioned in the trailer that you can play the game solo or multiplayer. There was some stuff that I saw where there's going to be different classes of vampires that might try to kind of left for dead style, uh, pull you away from your party if you're playing with a group of people or have kind of different tactics. There's going to be a variety of these different kinds of like super vampires, I guess. And that does all seem pretty good. Redfall is slated to come out in 2023. Definitely one of the bigger trailers of the show. I think probably a decent way to kick off the showcase. Next up, we finally got it. A brand new Silk Song trailer. Lots of gameplay here. It looks fairly massive considering this was supposed to just be a DLC expansion originally. Obviously, they've been working on it for a long time now. The, the developers over there at Team Cherry have been working on Silk Song for a while now. Uh, so that kind of makes sense. And they've obviously had made comments before about trying to make sure and get things right. And they honestly, they have a lot of hype and expectations to live up to. Hollow Knight, probably one of the best Metroidvania games in the last decade, if not of all time, a uh, really fantastic game. Anyways, in the trailer, we're getting, uh, we see a lot of different areas in here, a lot of different abilities and mechanics, a lot of different bosses and enemies. So definitely does seem like a full offering, a completely new game. Uh, it seems really sick, but no release date, right? There wasn't a release date. And we'll kind of get into this later, but you know, during the Xbox showcase, they did say that every game shown is gonna be released within the next 12 months. So that means by June of 10th or whatever, next year, next summer, that Silk Song should be out and any other game I talk about today should have already been out. Now, of course, uh, games get delayed. That happens. It's kind of a bold commitment to make here. Some people were making us think that uh, they had like this splash card that showed all the games they showed off during the showcase, which ones were coming out in 2022 and which ones are coming out in 2023. Uh, oddly, Silk Song wasn't in there. So people were like, hey, what's the deal? Uh, but Xbox did come out and confirm later on that yes, Silk Song should be out within the next 12 months for sure. Who knows how for sure that for sure is. Everything gets delayed nowadays, so who could really say, but it's nice to have at least a window, even if that window is, I guess, a year long. The next trailer, High on Life, is by, you know, the creators of Rick and Morty. Uh, there's talking guns who are kind of like these creatures you're trying to rescue. They have different personalities and obviously kind of the characteristics and firing types. There's a gross blobby guy at the end of this holding humans, which is super wild. I think it's everything you've come to expect from, from this team and uh, just we kind of cranked it up again to 11. So if that's your jam, I can see a lot of people being excited about this. Again, that's out sometime within the next 12 months. After that High on Life trailer, we got Sarah Bond coming out to talk about, you know, how all of these games are gonna be out in the next 12 months. I think this is a really cruel thing 
to put somebody out there in front of this to actually say these words. We know that games get delayed. We know that a lot of games lately have been getting delayed, so they might get called out later on. If a number of these games get pushed out, it's not gonna look good for Xbox. It's not gonna look good, especially for Sarah Bond, who's out on stage saying this. So hopefully too many of these games don't, don't get delayed. It would be a bummer. So hopefully they're managed to kind of stick to their guns and stick to this statement here and, and commit to all of these games coming out within 2022 or the first few months of 2023, obviously. Next up, we got what I feel is kind of a monumental announcement, Xbox and Riot Games teaming up uh, to bring all of the Riot Games to Game Pass. And yeah, there was a time when Riot Games only had one game, but now they have nearly five, right? Or six. They got League of Legends, there's Wild Rift, Legends of Runeterra, uh, Team Fight Tactics, and, and of course there's Valorant too. I, I think some of the bigger news around this is that if you're playing League of Legends on PC via Xbox Game Pass, or you're an Xbox Game Pass subscriber, uh, then you're going to get all of the champions unlocked. There are people who have been playing this game for over a decade that don't have all of the champions unlocked. So I don't know, that just feels like a kind of a big deal to me. I could see a lot of League fans being mad about this, but maybe a lot of them are gonna be excited by this. So uh, I think Riot has been looking for a good way to keep the drop off of League of Legends players from going too far down. Uh, I mean, you see this in their esports initiatives, you see this in them, you know, creating uh, animated series and comic books and, and all sorts of different avenues of fake girl bands, right? Any kind of avenue they can to get more people interested into the world of League of Legends, to get more people to sign up, to spend money in that game, uh, to play their games. They're they're pulling all the tricks, right? Uh, so I think this makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense for both companies. Obviously, Xbox wants more people to come in as Game Pass subscribers. And uh, for them, if there's people who are already huge League of Legends fans and just want to unlock every single character so they don't have to wait for the weekly rotation or they haven't bought ones that they want yet you just go and get an xbox game pass subscription and, and there you go i'm not sure what the value trade is there if you're a league of legends fan and this is exciting to you or you think it's pointless just for sure let me know in the comments but yeah kind of a wild announcement i wasn't expecting this particularly you know it makes sense we've seen it with ea play but i wasn't particularly expecting uh, for league of legends to show up with all the characters unlocked that's pretty wild all right next up we got a new trailer for plague tale requiem uh this is the sequel to a plague tale you're obviously gonna follow uh, amicia and her brother hugo's journey after events of the first game i'll try not to spoil too much here if you haven't played the first game i really recommend it essentially these like carnivorous rats are back and uh you know as Amicia and Hugo try to figure out what's what's going on. It, it looks like there's gonna be some conflict there where in the trailer, we kind of hear this back and forth about, you know, uh, just lethal gameplay versus trying to be stealthy and, and non-lethal. I think that's an interesting approach. So narratively, we're gonna get uh, that kind of conflict there between the characters who are, you know, trying to get by any way they can. And uh, for Amicia, a sister who's trying to protect her little brother through any means necessary, but coming to grips with what that really means, you know, with like taking a life and stuff. I know games have done this before and it kind of is hit or miss, but I think, you know, based on the storytelling we got in Plague Tale, uh, this this game looks, looks great. Uh, can't wait for it to come out. Obviously it's gonna be on Game Pass. It's gonna be on other platforms too, but that comes out in 2022. After that, we got another big Xbox kind of exclusive, uh, Forza Motorsport, got a trailer finally. That's been one that people have been just waiting for for a long time. They said that the physics system is 48 times improved. They're using photogrammetry and kind of advanced rendering techniques to make the game look even more realistic than it has in the past. There's dynamic time of day, weather system that kind of affects the grip of the track and all sorts of wild things if you like sim racing. Uh, there's gonna be uh, improved car damage, right? You know, there it is. They slated that game for 2023. So Forza fans, there you go. I hope you guys are happy. Next up, there's a flight simulator update coming, which adds gliders and helicopters and new aircraft, I guess. You can fly a Pelican from Halo. That was a pretty wild reveal. This is coming in November. So this year, 2022, they're gonna update Flight Simulator to include this stuff. I don't know if I would have put two sim games back to back in a showcase. This is probably one of the, the more down points aside from kind of, I guess, that ride announcement. But, um, but yeah, uh, if you like Flight Simulator, you should be psyched. After that, we got the Overwatch 2 kind of release date announcement trailer, sort of. Um, and that came with the announcement of a new character, Junker Queen, or The Junker Queen. 
who is a tank. She has a shotgun and an ax. She can kind of whirl that ax around and dash through enemies, it looks like. Didn't get a ton of info about that character and, and her abilities. I'm sure that's coming, but they did say that the early access era of Overwatch 2 is gonna start this year on October 4th. They've got a lot of work to do, like the Overwatch 2 beta that came out earlier, a lot of people were not happy with. They got a lot of criticisms for kind of being uninteresting or kind of taking away some of the magic that made the original Overwatch special. And alongside that, I haven't been able to find a standalone trailer for this anywhere, but it looks like they kind of advertised during the showcase um, this kind of Wastelander free-for-all mode or something like that. They kind of described it in a weird way that made it seem like it was an actual gameplay mode, but, uh, and, and I think they said that there's more info coming about it soon, but I haven't seen a lot of reporting around like, this is actually what this thing is. It, it's just, it seemed more, a little bit more along the lines of those Overwatch kind of story trailers where we see where the Junker Queen comes from, but then she's kind of like describing the aspects of, of like a, a PVE mode or a free-for-all mode. Just keep an eye out. Um, I, don't, I didn't see a lot of people reporting about like a new free-for-all mode for Overwatch 2, but we know we're supposed to be getting a lot of interesting things with Overwatch 2 in that vein more PVE, more story campaigns and things like that. So uh, maybe this is kind of the first glimpse at what that could be. Uh, so keep, definitely keep your eye out. But yeah, October 4th for that one. That's that's really soon. Next up was a cinematic trailer for Ara History Untold, which I think people have likened to Civ, but without gameplay, it's impossible to tell. It got the Xbox Game Studios banner um, and it's being made uh, by the same team that made Ashes of the Singularity. So if you're familiar with that kind of uh, strategy game, uh, or I guess it's more of an RTS, uh, then maybe that's what you can expect, but with more of a kind of um, old timey history feel to it. And again, you know, that's out sometime within the next 12 months. Next up, we kind of got a chunk of Bethesda announcements. Elder Scrolls Online, High Isle is an expansion for Elder Scrolls Online. It's gonna have new narrative content, new areas. It looks like new enemies and, you know, the whole suite of things that you would expect with an expansion. That's coming out June 21st, that is, very soon, that's within a couple of weeks here. Fallout 76, Expeditions, The Pit. That's right, The Pit is coming back. Uh, this is coming out in September. Uh, the trailer is pretty action oriented. It looks like, you know, you and your friends are gonna go in and try to save The Pit, I guess. Uh, if you remember, uh, The Pit is a DLC from Fallout 3 that features, you know, the post-apocalyptic world of Pittsburgh. Uh, I forget the timeline, but, uh, and I forget where Fallout 76 kind of takes place in the Fallout timeline, but I don't know, maybe you see some familiar faces. That's out sometime in 2022. We got more Forza Horizon uh, with Forza Horizon 5's kind of Hot Wheel team up. And this looks awesome. Again, I'm not a huge racing fan. I do enjoy Forza Horizon 5 quite a bit. This is a very impressive looking game, but to see these kind of wild Hot Wheels tracks and to see the Forza graphical treatment here, there is a Hot Wheels game, I know, but you know, this is Forza, it looks, incredible. So I'm excited to try this out. That's out in about a month, July 19th, 2022. After that, Ark Survival 2. Uh, this is a trailer that might put a smile on your face. If you, I just, the idea of seeing Vin Diesel riding a T-Rex, uh, I think is really humorous and funny to me. I don't know if that's the tone they're going for. Uh, I think it's supposed to have a more serious tone here, but you know, it's, it's a survival game and it's got a lot of systems going on. So I think there are a lot of humorous things happening in these art games, but uh, they did announce that this is gonna be a day one Game Pass game and it's coming out in 2023. Still no gameplay, but you can imagine it's probably gonna be an improved version of Ark. Next up, Scorn. This is uh, a little bit of a confusing trailer for me. I mean, we were seeing Scorn way back before the next gen consoles launched, right? Before the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, it sounded like Scorn was gonna be a launch window game. Uh, and here we are, you know, almost two years later, still no Scorn, but it does look super gross in every way, I guess, that probably HR Geiger fans would want it to. Just kind of a scary looking survival horror game. Maybe it's more adventure oriented where you're solving gross puzzles. It's finally supposed to come out this year, October 21st, and day one with Game Pass, which obviously is a theme with a lot of these games being announced. Next up, Flintlock is a game that I am actually pretty excited about. If you're not familiar, this is a game being developed by the team that made Ashen, which is a Souls-like game. Uh, but this looks like their kind of take on a more Bloodborne style mechanics. It seems like it has some really wild mechanics for invasion. You've got kind of a pistol and a melee weapon. There's also a pet system where you can kind of upgrade your pet with different abilities and, and things like that. If you're excited for it though, you're going to have to wait a little bit. This one's not coming out till early 2023. Now the next game I think we heard rumors about before the Xbox showcase happened. A lot of people were saying a Minecraft RTS was in the works. Uh, this game is called Minecraft Legends and it's actually an action strategy game, which I feel like does have RTS mechanics in it. 
Uh, we see kind of like a hero going around uh, building buildings, but not in the Minecraft sense. It's almost like they, you know, clicked a few different options and then the buildings kind of auto build. And then there's also mobs that kind of follow the hero around. Reminds me a lot of kind of like the uh, tower defense or tower offense type of a situation. Uh, obviously that's gonna be a console launch exclusive. Uh, I no idea if that's coming to PlayStation or not. For sure it'll be on Xbox and PC. That comes out 2023. Here's another game I'm pretty excited for, Lightyear Frontier, which is basically just mech farming. You have these giant tractor kind of looking mechs. And yeah, you're basically mech farming on uh, an alien world. There's rainbow corn and like humongous dino bones and stuff. Uh, this is supposed to be a game you can play on your own or, you know, co-op with friends. This is coming out spring 2023. If you haven't seen Lightyear Frontier, go check it out. I think it looks pretty cool. Then we got a trailer for Gunfire Reborn, which is like a cutesy, uh, furry, animal, first-person shooter. It's a roguelike. Uh, it's a four-player co-op thing. There's a lot of mobs. And yeah, it looks like there's different classes. This is coming out October 2022. So if this looks like your thing, you don't actually have to wait that long. Next up, The Last Case of Benedict Fox, which is an interesting looking uh, two and a half or 2.5D game. Uh, it's, it's 2D, but it's obviously happening in a, a kind of a 3D world with 3D assets. Uh, it's a horror game, maybe an eldritch kind of horror game, where you enter consciousness of, you know, these different victims to see their memories, and it looks like there's kind of gameplay elements in there. Looks like your character has, for some reason, these kind of like technical monster arms you can use uh, as mechanics or abilities in the game. I don't know if this is a Metroidvania, it looks more like kind of a, maybe an action adventure uh, 2D side scroller, but I guess we'll see in spring of 2023. That's that's pretty far out. And that is actually like right at the limit almost of, you know, they haven't basically until summer to get all of these games out. But spring 2023, if, you know, if that game gets pushed, it can't get pushed too far without, uh, you know, without them going back on their word that all these games are coming out within the next 12 months. So good luck to the last case of Benedict Fox. Next up, As Dusk Falls. This is a game I think we saw last year and it had kind of a wild trailer. It's one of those kind of narrative adventure games where you're making decisions. It's got uh, obviously a real visual novel aesthetic, um, the branching narratives, and uh, apparently you can play it with friends. There's, I don't know how that's gonna work. It's gonna support uh, co-op multiplayer. I think maybe there's a voting system, but I know there's other narrative adventure games kind of like this one that in the past will show different players different scenes simultaneously, and then you can kind of maybe vote what you want to do in terms of decision making. July 19th, 2022 for the release date on that. Next up, Naraka Blade Point. Uh, this game probably isn't on a lot of people's radar. It's like, it looks kind of interesting, I think, especially if you're looking for a new spin or a new take on Battle Royale games and you're more interested in kind of melee combat or abilities than, uh, you know, uh, left trigger, right trigger kind of mechanics or, you know, sniping and that sort of thing. It's getting also a campaign mode, I guess, and that's out June 23rd, 2022. After that, the next trailer shown was for a game called Pentiment. This is actually an Obsidian Entertainment game. It's a 2D adventure game. It's a murder mystery set during the Renaissance era of Italy. That's coming out November, 2022. I think it looks really interesting. It looks like, you know, the artwork that you might have seen in, uh, you know, Renaissance paintings or in your like, textbooks and history class or something come to life, you know, with text bubbles and things. It's kind of fun. What also looks fun is Grounded. That game got a tighter release date window for September, 2022. Uh, if you don't remember, it's basically where you're like these shrunk down kids that are trying to survive in their backyard. Uh, more giant spiders, so be ready for that if you're afraid of spiders. <laughs> but this game definitely, I think, had a lot of people getting the, the EVGBs, getting creeped out. Uh, but it looks like there's more of that stuff coming. And, and yeah, they've kind of, finished that game off. They finished updating, it looks like, all the different areas in the yard, so uh, a lot more to experience and play there. And you can, again, can check that out in September. Next up, Erebon Shadow Legacy. Um, this studio that makes this game is called Robot Baby, and it's being published by Raw Fury. Um, and it's a high-paced stealth action game where there's kind of, seems like to have been a robot apocalypse, and he plays this kind of ninja character stealthing around and then, you know, using uh, different combat abilities to dispatch the, 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 the robot uprising, I guess. That's out in 2023. Then finally, after that kind of longer slog of smaller games, we got a big section of the showcase dedicated to Diablo 4. The, the gameplay that they showed off was actually captured on a Series X. And I didn't know this before, but it looks like they're going to have a fully realized open world where you can kind of clear out areas of monsters and then those areas can become friendly towns. You can find new towns like this. And there's also like new dungeons and stuff that you can discover by exploring around. There's gonna be local events where you'll have to collaborate to kind of fight big monsters. 
the couch co-op is coming back. You know, that's something they updated to Diablo 3 after a while. Um, PVP, obviously, they're gonna mark different players as champions, if you're really good, I suppose, is what they said in the trailer. And you kind of become, their, their words were a loot pinata if you're marked. And then, um, obviously, they're already considering the end game. They said the last story mission plays into the end game. There's also going to be new items and new dungeons afterwards. And they're planning on supporting the game for years and years. Apparently. Also, you should note there's going to be a, like full character customization, it looks like, or a decent amount more of character customization than what Diablo games have had in the past. One thing that did come up is, you know, Diablo Immortals been in the news a lot lately for its microtransactions and for kind of the business model that that game has really been under fire. That was the headlining story during last week's weekend roundup. But Blizzard has come out and said that it's not going to have the same uh, pay model as Diablo Immortal, but Diablo 4 will have paid cosmetics and it will have paid expansions after the game comes out sometime in the first half of 2023, which feels, again, really soon. That does feel pretty soon. I can totally understand if people have hangups about that, about Diablo 4, about Blizzard in general. And things get even more interesting as you consider that by 2023 or the end of 2023, Blizzard is going to be owned by Xbox. So the acquisition isn't complete yet. It's not supposed to finish till summer 2023. Some people have speculated that it will finish sooner, but obviously we've done reporting on it where um, there, there's been some issues that have come up. It's been getting investigated by the FCC and things like that. So we'll see. It certainly makes things interesting that, you know, we got a lot of Activision exclusive reveals here during the Xbox showcase. So, you know, I don't know if that becomes a point of contention later on, probably not. Um, you know, we'll probably see this deal close in 2023 and then uh, who knows what's gonna happen from there. Probably the most fun trailer of the showcase was the Sea of Thieves musical trailer where they basically are promoting uh, a new update for season seven where the emphasis is on you becoming more of a captain or having more abilities as a captain. You're gonna be able to save ship loadouts. You're gonna be able to customize and name your ship. Uh, you can earn unique rewards that you can also display in your ship. There's going to be cash in points that make it easier to sell loot. And yeah, the whole kind of mission statement about season seven, I guess, is to, to really embrace being a pirate captain. So if you're looking for a reason to jump back into Sea of Thieves, that's coming out July 21st, 2022. Next up, we got a reveal for a game called Ravenlock. It has some real kind of Alice in Wonderland vibes. A girl gets pulled into a mirror, and then we see her running around with a sword and shield, fighting these monsters that kind of have a voxel aesthetic or they're kind of blocky. This game is being made by the developers who made Echo Generation. So if you're familiar with that, um, you can get pumped about this. I mostly saw what looked like kind of boss fights, it seemed, or kind of arena fights. I didn't see a lot of enemy enemies at once here, but maybe that's just because that stuff isn't ready to show. But I, I would assume this is kind of like a Souls-like situation, maybe, just the way that they kind of show the bosses and then the areas where you're fighting the bosses kind of look like these rounded off arena areas. So um, that's just me projecting there, but uh, that's Ravenlock. And that's gonna be a console launch exclusive coming in 2023. Next up, Cocoon is a game I think people have really been sleeping on because they didn't realize that it's from the same lead designer who made Limbo and Inside. It's kind of this bug themed game where you're moving around these different spheres to kind of solve puzzles. Yeah, kind of, I guess what you would expect, but it's a different perspective obviously than Limbo and Inside and it obviously has a full color palette. So that's a little bit different and it looks kind of interesting. If you like Limbo, if you like Inside, you should be really, really excited for Cocoon that comes out sometime in 2023. After that, we got a trailer for Wolong Fallen Dynasty. That's a Team Ninja game, you know, being published by Tecmo Koe. Uh, it's got zombie ninjas and a demon dragon, uh, and it looks like it's gonna have a lot of action. The trailer's really, really short, so it's kind of hard to say, but you know, with the pedigree of Team Ninja, uh, you can kind of guess what this game is gonna be. Um, and that's gonna be, you know, early 2023 when it comes out. Then at long last, Xbox boss Phil Spencer finally appeared to uh, introduce some of these larger announcements, I guess. First up, Persona 3, Persona 4 Golden, and Persona 5 Royale are coming to Xbox Game Pass. They're not all coming at the same time. They're gonna start with Persona 3, and that's gonna happen October 21st. You can imagine then they'll save, you know, Persona 4 Golden, Persona 5 uh, Royale for different months of the year, you know, sometime in that 12 month window. Pretty smart. I think, you know, people are critical of, you know, Xbox ability to uh, appeal to Japanese audience, I suppose. And these are some of the biggest Japanese RPGs there are. And people love them. So it's a really good get for them. To add to that, uh, Phil Spencer also introduced Hideo Kojima, who kind of showed up to talk about 
uh, the project that he's working on with Xbox. This has been rumored for a long time, finally confirmed, no details about what it is yet at all. Only that uh, Hideo is very excited about, you know, the technology of the Xbox kind of platform. I don't know if that means like the cloud gaming aspect of it, or if that means specifically the Xbox Series X, but saying that he'll be implementing that technology to make some type of game that no one has ever played before. Pretty exciting news if you're a Hideo Kojima fan. Who knows when that comes out? Apparently, um, his relationship with Sony is still very, very good. So if you're looking forward to kind of a Death Stranding sequel, that's probably very much likely in the works alongside, I believe, um, uh, some kind of a movie or, or a series that, that, that he had kind of mentioned that they're um, branching out their studios to work on and now this new Xbox project. So a lot of growth over there at Kojima Productions. After that, Spencer kind of showed off that calendar I mentioned before where it listed all the 2022 games and all the 2023 games. You know, he talks about how Xbox has been having record growth. And then you pretty much realize that every game so far uh, it ha that was announced is either gonna be on Game Pass day one, is an Xbox console launch exclusive, or it just is gonna be on Game Pass eventually. Kind of wild when you think about it, but the show didn't stop there. Finally, we got a very long overdue and much anticipated presentation for Starfield, uh, where they went through and talked about different aspects of that game. They showed off kind of the starting area. There's a lot of gameplay here. They showed a lockpick mini game. Uh, they showed how like some areas are gonna have uh, very low gravity, so when you jump, you're gonna just go flying up into the air and that can affect combat, obviously. They showed off the different factions. So you can kind of choose which side to align yourself with. It's just kind of typical Bethesda game trappings through and through. There's a mysterious alien artifact apparently that's giving you visions and the kind of plot of the game is to find more of these artifacts to, you know, quote unquote, unlock their secrets. They showed off the character creator, a lot of different elements you can customize there, including uh, special stats that can kind of come with, with buffs and debuffs, uh, optional traits essentially that should make your kind of playthroughs a little more interesting. Uh, you, uh, in true Bethesda style, you're going to rank up your skills by using them. There's deep crafting systems. You're gonna be able to build your own spaceships, which I think is probably one of the more interesting aspects of this game. And then they showed off space combat, which is cool. One thing that they did say though, that's been getting a lot of discourse online, you know, today and, and, and since they, they announced it yesterday is that uh, you're going to be able to explore anywhere on a given planet. There's multiple planets in a system and there's going to be over a hundred different systems. So there's gonna be over apparently a thousand planets in Starfield. So the big question right now is, is this a positive thing for Starfield to have all these different worlds to explore where it feels like you can just go and land and have kind of emergent gameplay experiences, have your own stories on these like unique planets, or, you know, are they gonna run into the No Man's Sky situation where they have all these different worlds to explore but nothing to do on them, where people will be kind of bored and, and, and upset about like, it just feels overwhelming and then, and also repetitive. So that's kind of been the conversation around Starfield so far, people wondering if, if you know, bigger is actually better. I, I think a lot of people are critical of also the way the game looks. It does kind of look like Fallout in space at times, I'm gonna be honest. Um, I know some people critical of the, the shooting, right? Uh, and, and again, they did delay that game until next year. They did delay Redfall until next year. So obviously needs a lot of work. And we know how Bethesda game launches go, usually tons of bugs. Um, and I think probably also to kind of counter some of the criticisms is a lot of people do want to just experience Fallout in space or Skyrim in space. Uh, so there, there's already an audience there, right? We're talking about, you know, the same fans who have kind of kept Fallout 76 alive, which, you know, who would have thought that we'd still be seeing updates for Fallout 76 now uh, in 2022. There are definitely a lot of people who are excited for this game, but now I think there are a lot of people who are also concerned about Starfield. And, you know, only time will tell. We'll see as we get closer to launch if, if it's shaping up to be the game that everybody wants or if those um, kind of people who want a, a space RPG are just going to still stick to, um, you know, Elite Dangerous or No Man's Sky or whatever other space sim, <laughs> Star Citizen, I guess, that they're kind of enjoying. Uh, so, you know, we'll just wait and see. And that's it. That was the whole show. Uh, hopefully that didn't take too long to get through all of that. I just kind of wanted to, to, you know, illustrate all of the different games that were there so we can talk about it in kind of a, a broader sense. Um, I think as far as the production goes, this was a really, really good show, right? There wasn't a lot of weird or awkward moments. Uh, maybe some of the games weren't interesting to you, but you know, they, they just kind of served them up one game after the other. It was fairly entertaining to watch in that way, in that style, you know, and the show is gonna hit with you, um, you know, based on which of these games you liked or really didn't like 
what your tastes are, right? But as far as like the production goes, no issues. They're getting better and better at this stuff every year. I think PlayStation is too. Nintendo obviously has been doing digital showcases for a long time, but production wise, this is one of the better showcases. Announcement wise, I think the bigger announcements are exciting, but exciting for people who are kind of following game news and following, you know, what's happening with industry trends. Uh, and just obviously Xbox still all the way in on Game Pass. Almost every game uh, at the show is coming to Game Pass or is gonna be uh, a day one launch on Game Pass. Some of them aren't, and some of them obviously are gonna be on other platforms as well, like a Plague Tale Requiem, so, so there's that. So kind of just looking at the big takeaways here, the big announcements, I think that probably win hearts and minds. Having a Silk Song gameplay trailer, adding Persona 3, Persona 4, and Persona 5 to Game Pass, and obviously you'll be able to play those games on other devices if you have xCloud. Uh, that big Diablo 4 section, despite all the drama that's going on with Blizzard and Activision, I think a lot of people have high hopes that Microsoft is gonna come in after they buy this company and flip things around. Even if not, I think when people see a good gameplay trailer, they tend to forget you know, the, the kind of larger world. I know there's a lot of people, even in, you know, the games press who are excited to play Diablo 4 who want to see that game. And of course there was the Redfall trailer right at the front. They needed to show that game. Obviously they needed to have gameplay for it, even though it's not coming out this year. I think it gave us a better idea of what that game is to expect. And, you know, I think originally people thought it was a Left 4 Dead clone. And it is a little Left 4 Dead-y, I think, with vampires, but it definitely does have a lot of other things going for it. If nothing else, you know, Arcane Studios uh, usually has some interesting aspect to the, the games that they make. So I'm interested to see it, if not for that uh, on its own. And obviously the big Starfield gameplay reveals kind of diving into what that game actually is. We certainly needed to see that. And I think even if it does just end up being kind of Fallout in space, Fallout with a, a space uh, theme wrapping around it. I think there's a lot of Bethesda fans who are going to be just fine with that. And again, I think there's a lot of emergent gameplay, a lot of kind of player stories that come out of Bethesda games, and that's why people are attracted to these different things, uh, you know, different systems happening in, in these games that interact with each other in different ways. And it seems like that's all going to be here and present in Starfield. So people on board for that. Uh, I'll give a brief shout out to Forza Motorsport. Not my particular cup of tea, but I know that game is going to be important to a lot of people, a lot of uh, racing fans out there. Uh, the Hideo announcement, that's a win for sure. And that Riot announcement, uh, it, it's probably not that exciting of an announcement for a lot of people, but uh, that that partnership is, is coming together going forward. I think it, it's going to benefit both companies in, in kind of a major way. Now to kind of get back to what I was talking about at the front of the video, I think this showcase is indicative of kind of a new shift for Xbox. I think it shows us what we're going to kind of see going forward with Xbox showcases as well. I mean, having them show games that are only going to be released within the next 12 months, um, it certainly signals to me that it's kind of a real line on focus. Now, this could be a situation where they're only doing that uh, this time around because of criticisms they've been facing even more recently uh, about, you know, Xbox has no games and obviously, you know, the light 2022 with not having or, or with uh, delaying Redfall and Starfield into next year. So maybe this potentially could be a one-off showcase, but um, I think maybe not. I, I think that this might not be the case. I think they're going to be more Nintendo-like in terms of these showcases and in terms of their presentation, simply for the fact that they have a huge stable of game developers now, and they kind of can just rotate through these bigger titles that they expect to do well, um, instead of trying to announce every single thing that they're working on, right? They have so many studios now that they can just kind of talk about the off-season stuff, I guess, if you will. I take Nintendo, for example, you know, this is a year where they don't have a, a big Mario game or a big Zelda game. Uh, there's no Metroid this year, but you know, they did have two Pokemon games and uh, they're gonna release Xenoblade Chronicles 3 later this year and I think Splatoon 3, right? It's, you know, Splatoon, not exactly a pillar franchise, right, for Nintendo, at least early on, or at least you wouldn't have, have thought so. Um, but now they've built that IP up in a way that lots of people love it and it will sell well. So I think Microsoft is headed f into a similar direction in that sense. Obviously very different companies with very different uh, marketing and, and business strategies, but uh, when it comes to kind of what they're willing to show and what they're ready to show, uh, I think it's gonna be a little more like Nintendo Direct in style, in which they're only gonna start talking about games that are coming out soon uh, to get people amped up and to kind of, again, help with their brand messaging and their, their image. Basically just shortening the, the visible timeline for like how long it takes to make games basically and reducing the amount of criticisms that they'll probably receive for showing games that aren't finished or that are, are you know years and years and years away. 
Uh, I mean, truthfully, that's how you get a lot of that wow factor. And I think there was a lot of wow factor missing from this uh, showcase this year, but it's probably better this way in that they kind of try to uh, refute whatever criticisms they've been receiving by showing games that are coming out real, real soon. Just to kind of say like, hey, look, we have games and Game Pass is still gonna be a, a super big threat. So to kind of explore that point a little bit further, if you think about it, there are a ton of Xbox games that didn't get showed off, right? That they could have, you know, whipped up a quick teaser for or something to get fans excited to make it seem like they had even more stuff. But, you know, at this point, I feel like they just didn't need to. If you think about it, you know, they didn't show Hellblade 2 or Avowed or Contraband. There was no Collision game, so no new Gears of War, uh, no State of Decay 3, which, you know, I've heard has been having development troubles, uh, no new Wolfenstein, there's other Bethesda games, you know, no Doom Updater or new projects, uh, that Compulsion games uh, title that's being worked on apparently by a large studio, right? They, they boosted up that studio, they staffed up. We haven't seen that game yet. Um, and there wasn't anything from Double Fine, who Microsoft now owns. We just had Day of the Devs yesterday as well. Um, but, you know, it's, I think that there's probably also a larger project there now that Psychonauts 2 is done, right? And I think Tim Schafer is eager again, maybe to dip his toe back into, you know, triple A or triple B development where he's more free to kind of make the game that he wants to make with, with some risks and things. So yeah, there's definitely all of those games. I'm probably missing more than a few. There's so many studios now. And then again, with Activision Blizzard being acquired next year and, you know, being added to the Xbox Game Studios stable, it's going to be wild. They no longer have to talk about every single game that they have in development or that's working. They're going to be able to kind of just trade off and circle through. And now I think it's very possible that we get two showcases a year even uh, with all of these different games once things really, really start speeding up. And I think this, this showcase, the 2022 showcase, is kind of the start of that. It's like this shift in momentum. It's what they've been building up to for a long time and now we're kind of seeing it. Obviously, another takeaway from Xbox's 2022 showcase is how much they are doubling, tripling, quadrupling down on Game Pass. I think with all of these trailers that they've shown, they, like everything was basically Xbox uh, console launch exclusive with, with day one Game Pass or coming to Game Pass eventually, which is just wild. And I think with the exclusive stuff, that certainly has the ability to undercut other platforms like PlayStation and even like Nintendo in some cases with these smaller indie games where, you know, those two platforms are gonna have to wait. And, you know, for players that are, uh, you know, PlayStation exclusive or Nintendo exclusive, uh, for, for, for homes that only have, you know, those specific boxes, maybe that's not such a big deal. But for anyone else and the larger PC gaming audience, I think that is a big deal to subscribe to these games on Xbox Game Pass. And, you know, during the showcase, I did get the impression, I think there was even an announcement that they are trying to, you know, line those things up more and more where what you get with a PC Game Pass is uh, more in line, if not, if it isn't already, kind of with what you're getting on like the, the console version of Game Pass. So uh, certainly I think that 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 it's gonna undercut sales um, for PlayStation, maybe for Nintendo. To what extent, I couldn't say. Long-term, I don't know. Maybe PlayStation's focus on their exclusives is enough to keep their audience happy, is enough for their audience to kind of wait in between those big AAA um, uh, first-party exclusives with some of the smaller games that come out eventually, right? Um, so who could say, but it definitely can see implications here, larger implications here that could impact the overall game industry. Um, and I think we shouldn't count that, that out. Now, before people kind of get it twisted, I'm not saying that Xbox is gonna completely kill PlayStation or completely kill Nintendo. I don't think any of those companies is going anywhere anytime soon. Nintendo obviously doing very, very well with what they're doing. I think PlayStation also doing really well with what they're doing. If anything, I think maybe Xbox just into the absorbing aspects of the games industry where they have this just multitude of offerings and they're, they have like a, perhaps a better uh, service, something like this. Uh, but PlayStation is always gonna have those first party exclusives. They've been really smart with those. They're going to continue to double down on PC um, and they're continuing to make a lot of money doing that. So I don't think PlayStation is going anywhere, but certainly uh, obviously Xbox is, is out there just buying up tons and tons of studios. So they have all of these different offerings, right? Um, and then, but then again, there's also Nintendo who has their core franchises and they live and die by that as well as their hardware. So I think in that way, PlayStation will kind of always be fine but um, I guess we'll just see as, as time goes on. So overall for the showcase, I think it's an, an S tier as far as the production values go, right? We got trailer to trailer to trailer, not a lot of interruptions in between, not a ton of corporate speak, a little bit in there, uh, but you didn't get a lot of these lull moments um, that, or awkward moments that we sometimes get with these showcases. I think that, that part was great, but in terms of the games that they showed, that's maybe more of like a B or uh, A ranking, I guess. Maybe a, maybe a minus or so. 
uh, just simply because there wasn't a single game that had a ton of wow factor that just completely blew people away. I think a lot of what they showed was games that people have been anticipating for a while. Silk Song, Starfield, Redfall. Um, being able to see the, the gameplay for those, you know, more gameplay for those, uh, is very exciting and, and awesome, but I think it just all looks kind of good. And that's not bad, but it's not like an S tier showcase, I think, for that reason. It's probably more like a A minus. B plus area, but that's just me. I think Starfield is supposed to be that big game that, that blew people away. I think the hype was a little bit overdone. Um, I think uh, there are definitely, uh, I think like we talked about before, red flag elements to Starfield. And, and it does look like one of those games. So if you're a big, you know, open world Bethesda game fan, you're gonna be psyched out of your mind right now. For the rest of us, we'll probably put in, you know, 50 to 70 hours and then call it a day, which is totally fine. Uh, Redfall looks interesting. I think it looks great, but I think mostly I'm excited about Silk Song. So those are my thoughts on the show. If you want to share your thoughts on the show, I will be sure to read them in the comments down below. That rhymed. I didn't mean to do that. Thanks for watching everyone at home. And for more video game news and updates, be sure to stay tuned right here to Inside Gaming.